Marriage engagement photographers videographers of Reddit. Have you developed a sixth sense for which marriages will flourish and which will not? What are the green and red flags? At my parents wedding, the photographer said to my grandmother, I've seen a lot of couples and I know which ones will stay together. These two they're gonna stay together. Then three years later that photographer killed his wife. Technically doesn't invalidate his opinion. Wedding band guitar player here. Drunk and gorilla sized groom physically attacked us when we cut off the music after already going over our contracted time an hour. Mother of the groom got into the mix and pulled him back. Bride was in tears. Best man pulled out a bluetooth speaker and kept the party going. We did not get a 5 star review. So that was a red flag. They lasted a few months. That best man did exactly what he needed to do at least. I am was a wedding photographer. I think you can kind of tell if they are going to stay together forever based on how they handle all the little, and sometimes even big, problems a wedding day can bring. There was one couple's story I love to tell. They are not your typical bride and groom. They had their wedding in a forest where you could also go climbing. Sorry don't know what they are called. With a big wooden house and fireplace in front. All vegan food and a lot of friends with lures of dogs. Everything was perfect, except the special dress the bride had have made and painted didn't arrive in time for the ceremony and she was devastated. She was in her sweatpants and a Mickey Mouse shirt at that time and her soon to be husband took off his suit, put on a big white shirt, stood there in his boxer shorts and just said well, we have to go, cause the ceremony. Person had to leave an hour later, and she just laughed and went with it. I was in shock but other than it being strange to have hairy man legs in my wedding photos. Taking the pictures was really fun and they were totally relaxed. I'm pretty sure they will be doing well. That's goddamn adorable. And I have to tell this one too. I didn't need a sixth sense when I heard that on their honeymoon, the bride cheated on the groom. So the groom's parents didn't want the photos or the video I had shot. Instead they wanted me to sue her for the remainder of the money they owed me. I told them I was sorry but they signed the contract so they had to pay. The bride was a total B to him all day at the wedding. It was no surprise she did this. He was absolutely heartbroken. And yes, they sent me a check for the remainder. And I still have all the photos. Developed and collecting dust in a pile still in the lab bag I brought them home in. This was in 2003, and I can't bring myself to throw them away. The best part? The groom called me two years later to do his wedding photos and video because he was getting married again. I was all set to do it, and then the new fiancé pulled the plug. Turns out she didn't want any memories of the first wedding being involved. So I was fired as soon as I was hired. Jesus I thought you were going to say she pulled the plug as in called the second wedding off entirely, just when that dude didn't have a crappy enough love life. Wedding videographer here. Had a couple fly us out to Iceland for their engagement shoot. Now the first couple of days were fine and everything looked okay, but in Iceland, some lodging options aren't very luxurious. The groom chose to book what was essentially a tiny bunk house. The ones meant for those summer camps, and the bride lost it and complained the whole night. Next morning things are pretty tense and our team continues the shoot as planned even though it is incredibly awkward. Most of our plans fall through because they start arguing. In front of a beautiful, solitary glacier. For 2 hours, our team can hear them yelling at each other half a mile away because there is literally no one else around for miles. We finish up whatever we could of the last day of the shoot and awkwardly said our goodbyes. Later on I learn that they broke up a month before the wedding. At least they didn't commit to making one another miserable for the rest of their lives. Or for a month after the wedding. Photographer here. I swear that all of the couples that have split up have smashed the cake in their SOS face. None of the nice cake couples have. Just my weird anecdotal experience. Maybe it's a sign of respect for each other. You're the second person I've heard say this. If it's not okay with both people, it totally makes sense. I feel like I would wanna do that, but plan it ahead of time. There is one particular venue that has a 100% divorce rate with our clients. It's a state park, which I've dubbed Omen Meadows. 
former wedding videographer, when doing the letter read the bride at the end said which I quote well that was freaking stupid. I cut that part out in the final video. Let me clarify what I am referring to. The couple reads their letter from their partner prior to the wedding. She just got done reading the groom's letter and was talking about what he wrote. To be fair, what he wrote was not exactly Shakespeare but still a harsh response. Red flag. The groom winking at both my assistant and I during the ceremony. He was not winking in the sense that he might have been tearing up or had something in his eye but there was a part in the ceremony where the couple sat down and he would lean his head back in his chair look past his soon to be wife and wink at me. Or look over his left shoulder and wink at my assistant. It was bizarre. That's just Morse code for I'm a douchebag. Not a wedding photographer, but my parents wedding video is a tell all story. At the cake cutting, my mom had specifically asked my dad not to put cake on her face, which is usually a tradition. Dad did it anyway, mom smacked him across the face. Dad said frick this and stormed out of the reception. They had a 20 year rocky marriage of lies and infidelity, and are finally officially divorced. They are much better off now. The cake cutting really seems to be a good rule of thumb for a relationship. I'm genuinely surprised at the number of times face caking has been called a harbinger of divorce in this comment section. To be fair, I never did enjoy seeing it happen, unless the couple had agreed to it beforehand and were having fun. It always seemed like an out of the blow dong move that ruined the victim's mood, and often their clothes and makeup. Photographer here. To me the biggest sign is the cake cutting. Some people like to smear the cake everywhere as a joke, some people don't. Usually the couple is in sync about this. They know what the other would like and they don't smush cake on the other's face if they wouldn't want that. Sometimes one of them, usually the groom, will force cake all over the other's face and embarrass and upset them. I've seen this happen a handful of times and all of those relationships that I have kept up with have ended in a divorce. At my wedding, my husband knew not to do this. I warned him multiple times before the day not to freaking do this. Guess what he does when we're cutting the cake? Yup, I was furious. We lasted 2 years and he's now my ex-husband. So I can definitely attest to the accuracy of this lol. Photographer here. You can tell somewhat based on how the couple treats each other on the wedding day. If they are respectful towards one another, and toward me, during a day full of stress then I think that's a good indicator of being able to deal with other problems that may arise during a marriage. Best advice I got about marriage was from my psychology professor. He told us never to marry someone until you've seen how they react when something goes wrong. I think for some couples that may unfortunately turn out to be the day of the wedding. Ex-wedding photographer. Typically I saw red flags when the bride or groom is super quiet. I mean silent in just watching. One instance was a groom who barely said 10 words to anyone during the ceremony or reception afterwards. The bride and her mother were extremely loud and excited the entire time. The bride needed everything to be perfect. I dropped off the photo bundle with them two weeks later and he was still quiet. She however complained about all of the pictures because the groom wasn't smiling enough. She wanted a discount because I couldn't make him look happy enough. They got divorced about a year later. I know because I did his engagement photos with his new fiancé about 4 years after his first wedding. His engagement photos showed him much happier. I stopped doing weddings but I do some portraits and mostly commercial and project work. He called me for a wedding quote but I had stopped doing them at that point. I do still do portraits so I offered to do engagement photos for him that he was happy with. Well at least he liked your work enough to hire you a second time despite him being miserable the first time. So you must be a dang good photographer. My husband and I are wedding photographers. We've been pretty lucky so far and haven't had too many crazies. We have stayed friends with a few of the couples and see them regularly. The one couple we hope we never see again fought the entire wedding day. The couple barely looked at each other, it was so bad. Then we had to photoshop a smile onto the groom a couple of times so he at least looked happy in the ceremony of all things. To describe what he looked like, I would compare him to a Polish meat butcher with transitions lensed glasses. Totally brutal. I have no idea if they are together still but I would say not. Comma a Polish meat butcher with transitions lensed glasses. Yikes. Wedding videographer here. 
I try to get to know both people beforehand, so I can work in their hobbies unique trays into my product. A big red flag is when one person is clearly trying to change the other. I had one dude who loved poker, craft beer, cigars, hanging with his rowdy friends, video games, etc. I planned a cool shoot where I had all his friends in an old west saloon, and he sees his bride to be, etc. But he steps in and declares oh, he won't be doing any of those things anymore. Poor bastard just sat there in silence as I awkwardly had to plan them shopping for a Yorkie puppy instead. Halfway through post production after the wedding, he called and said he was getting an annulment. I wanted to say could have told you so but I try to stay neutral. Green flags are just the opposite. Embracing the other person's habits hobbies interests. Basically not being a controlling freak shell. Cake artist here. I had a couple come in for a tasting. Appointment was for 7pm, but he was late. First half hour was just her. She told me they met at a stable where they both kept their horses. Those horses were going to be featured at the wedding as the bride and groom would ride them to the site. A beautiful farm venue. She described in detail her self-designed medieval gown. Flower wreath in her hair. Embroidered shoes like some from a museum. Sounded lovely. She wanted a cake like a castle, which was a specialty of mine. The whole wedding would be over the top, but not in a cringy way. Then he arrives. Barely says hi to her. Sits down and starts telling me about his wedding. He'll ride and dressed as a riverboat gambler with a frock coat, brocade vest, string tire, big hat, gold pocket watch, and sterling silver spurs. He's fine with the castle cake, but wants to incorporate the watch and a pair of mother of pearl handled pistols. Picture given. I had already decided that I was not going to work with them. No way could I come up with a cake that would work for them. But they were there so I brought out the samples. For the next hour they carried on two entirely separate monologues. They didn't address each other, or me. And they didn't listen to each other, or me. I made no attempt to book them that night. And when they called later in the week I told them their date had been taken. They were living in two incompatible and entirely self-contained fantasies. I doubt they even made it to the wedding day. This is so interesting. I'd love to see what these people are like day to day. I'm envisioning a ceremony that is split right down the middle of the aisle. Half beautiful and ethereal. Half rowdy and gunsling away. It's amazing. Ex-wedding photographer here. There were only a couple situations where I had doubt about the couple's future and one where I was certain. 1. I met the couple in a cafe to discuss their ideas and my services. The girl was very happy. She was very emotional and interested. The guy, however, was rolling his eyes and grunting at everything and I stopped trying to get him involved in the conversation after he ignored me twice. It made the girl very uncomfortable and she was apologetic of his behavior. I don't know what happened to them, as they apparently chose to reschedule their wedding and didn't hire me in the end. 2. I declined shooting a wedding when the person who was going to hire me was the groom's mom. When I asked her to arrange a meeting with the couple, she said that they didn't want a wedding, meaning they wanted to elope, and it was her initiative to celebrate it. I tried to play I want to hear bride's ideas card. But she told me the bride has no ideas, she obeys the groom, and the groom obeys mom. So I'll only talk to the mom. So I declined. I hope the girl is fine. No one deserves a controlling mill. 3. Finally, I was a guest and a photographer at my friend's wedding. The bridesmaid was wearing a short white dress and she was chirping about her side hustle modeling for photos and catalogs. How her boyfriend saw her in a so many wedding dresses he won't be surprised when she wears one to the wedding and how she caught 8 bouquets already. This will be her ninth. She talked a lot about wedding planning and stuff. But apparently there hadn't even been a formal proposal and her boyfriend, who was a guest as well, looked very annoyed and clearly wished he were somewhere else. Anyway, the bridesmaid started bugging me for photos of her and her boyfriend a week after the wedding. I told her several times that when I start editing the photos, I will do hers first, and by the time I sent her the photos, they were already broken up. She started dating someone else a month later and got married the next year. Looks like she cared more about the idea of marriage. The man is just a placeholder for a fantasy. Big red flag. I used to work in day of wedding coordination, and I remember two couples that I couldn't wait to hear about the divorce. 
When you pay a wedding coordinator, you only pay for the things the coordinator orders plans, flowers, catering, DJ and coordinator fees, anything else couples buy, dresses, gifts, suits, etc. are added. We estimated this to be a $500,000 wedding. Easy. Dad paying for all of it. The bride was a total sweetheart when I met her. The groom seemed quiet, but was very easygoing. Always nice to have a sober groom. And he didn't drink a drop during the day. Then the photographer videographer left to take some venue shots. The bride began berating everyone, myself included, on how her perfect day had to be capped out because no one wanted to give her more. My clothes were trashy, the DJ's computer was a PC, the bar staff were wearing red vests and she hates vests. Photographer came back and she was an angel again. The second was a wedding of a general and pediatric surgeon in the local hospital, paid for their own beautiful and in their means wedding. The bride was seriously amazing, but there was a mix up day of the wedding. The 200 chairs that were supposed to be moved to the third story of the historic building weren't taken upstairs. So my boss, the other assistant, and the 8 month pregnant venue coordinator start carrying chairs upstairs. At 3 flights, it wasn't great. After the wedding, we had to do it again, but down. The father of the groom started helping us. We begged him to enjoy his son's day, but he responded that if it were his daughter doing this, he'd be furious. Groom comes by and tells his dad to stop helping the pregnant woman stack chairs. He looks at the monster that is his son and asked how he'd feel if it was his wife or sister who had to do this. The groom told his dad that maybe if we had applied ourselves a little more, we wouldn't have been taking out the trash at a successful couple's wedding. Clearly he didn't know how much his wife was paying us. Comma the DJ's computer was a PC. Of all the crap to even notice. Not a photographer, but I make a lot of engagement rings. It's actually really simple. If they're nice to each other, and nice to me and my staff, they are going to do well. If they're short-tempered, rude, pushy, etc., it's a sign they don't really want to be there. When my husband and I were in shopping, a worker who wasn't working specifically with us heard us asking about inscriptions. She said, I give them 5 years, maximum the guy working with us was shocked. I felt so bad for him. I also couldn't believe a jewelry place with hire this woman. We are coming up on 5 years this year, but things are going really well so she can suck it. Haha. <laughs> Wedding planner here. Red flags. Nerves are normal but when one of the pair start doubting whether they should go through with it worry before the day, you know something isn't quite right. Green flags. They make decisions together and have each other's backs especially when family can be pressuring. The best wedding I ever saw. The groom really liked donuts so their reception had a giant donut wall and it was so cool. The bride and groom just seemed to exude happiness. You could see the genuine love, respect, and joy in their eyes. I knew they were going to make it. Weirdest one I saw wasn't anything major, but the bride just didn't seem to care. Maybe she was simply a really laid back person, but my job was to follow her for the day and she was doing so much nothing that I texted my boss and took an early lunch, returned for the ceremony. I can usually also tell by the friend group how happy the couple is going to be when I see them together. The ones whose friends are so happy to be there with them on that day, they are the ones with big smiles the whole time. And it's said a lot but it's true, the more expensive weddings are usually less fun and a lot more stressful. I used to help a buddy of mine do wedding videos back in college. I found the bigger the country hit they use for the wedding song, the shorter the marriage. Obscure song seemed to last longer. Comma obscure song seemed to last longer. This is why I only played weird Al deep cuts. We're destined to be married until death do we part. Wedding videographer. Probably when the bride got absolutely blackout drunk and started telling everyone at the party, in that drunk loud whisper that she was fricking the groom's brother. LOL this isn't a red flag, this is when you get a divorce. A friend of mine is a fairly successful engagement marriage photographer, as well as a relationship blogger. She says she can tell how in love a couple is based on whether they pay attention to each other during the photos or her, the photographer. I guess it's the contrast of sharing an experience together versus fretting over optics. 
I've never heard her mention specific red flags, but she speaks very highly of couples who are willing to be silly and adventurous in their engagement shoots over those who are just taking the most glamorous streamlined portraits. ETA should have specified she is a wildlife documentary styled photographer. She doesn't pose people, she follows them around as they hike, rock climb, build campfires, whatever. That's why their attention is significant. It's supposed to be a candid experience and capture their natural dynamic. The biggest red flag I ever saw. I was the assistant photographer at a wedding that took place in a 20-ish story hotel. I took the groom downstairs to meet his groomsmen for photos on the street. Riding alone with him on the elevator. He'd had a couple of beers with his groomsmen but was far from drunk. On the elevator ride, he looked at himself in the reflective metal doors of the elevator and said, Loud enough for me to hear. What the frick are you doing? I stayed completely and didn't say a word. We got off the elevator and neither of us mentioned it. I have no idea if they're still married. The wedding happened at least 8 years ago and I don't remember their names. I was an assistant, after all, so I wasn't responsible for client intake or anything like that. I could see this going either way. I've definitely said the same thing to myself while looking in a mirror, but more of a positive reflection and a bit of amazement where I am. Not a photographer, but I'm a minister with a 100% divorce rate. I think the biggest red flag is me performing your marriage ceremony. Video editor here. I've had my fair share of wedding videos back then. Red flags. One partner is having a lot of fun, dancing and mingling, while the other is mostly sitting down. They aren't smiling except when taking photos. The vows are very fluffy or almost selfish. Like how you'd imagine an 11 year talking about their prince charming. Bonus if the counterpart has something very short and not as emotional. Green flags. They can't keep away from each other. Laughing during the first dance, at the aisle, cake, speeches etc. I know maybe cheesy for some, but themed weddings. People that can dork out together stay together. People that can dork out stay together. Heck, yes. If you and your spouse can let your freak flag fly in front of your closest friends and family, you are honest people and can likely get most things worked through. People of Reddit who got divorced and then remarried the same person again, what's your story? My parents, step, mom and dad married at a young age, 18 and 16, I guess that was okay back in the day, had two kids, divorced. Dad had another child, then married my biological mother and had me. Mother died of cancer, was just my dad and I for a few years. My oldest, half, sister was having her first child, so we visited. Obviously her mother was there as well. My dad and her rekindled their relationship. After a few years, she officially adopts me. That was 20 years ago and they are still going strong. I've known her over 2 stroke 3 of my life and she's as good as a mother that anyone could have. This one is rather sweet. I am sorry about losing your mother, though. My grandparents did. My grandfather suffered massive PTSD from serving in the navy and would get so angry he would black out and forget what he did. He was very abusive to my mother while she was growing up. My grandmother divorced him and it was a wake up call for my grandfather and he got the proper help he needed. After about 8 months of anger management sessions and seeing a psychologist on the regular my grandmother got remarried to him. Also my mother and grandfather's relationship is great now and he is a very calm individual. I've rarely ever seen him angry and when he does it's definitely not violent. My ridiculous co-worker divorced her husband because he said something like you can't live without me. She divorced him to prove a point, but then remarried him so I guess he really proved his point. Haha <laughs> she really showed him, and wasted a lot of money and time haha. <laughs> My parents did that, bitter divorce, drawn out custody battle, nightmares all around. Almost 30 years later, they got remarried and stayed that way until my mom passed away. They were married in 1964 when my mom was 16 and my dad was 21. They came from completely different backgrounds. Mom was native, grew up very poor in a rural area with alcoholic parents. Dad was a spoiled mama's boy, but had a strict German father. And both my grandparents really disliked my mom for years and years and still loved each other enough to try again regardless of the heck they'd put each other through during the divorce. My dad and former stepdad became friends, and they hang out every night just working on cars and playing cards. 
so weird. We got married in our early 20s. Had a few happy years together and eventually had several problems all at once. From money to illness. Everything became tension and we ended up hating each other. I got a load of mental health problems as a result and we separated and divorced amicably. Over 3 years we would sporadically talk on social media or the phone over Christmas or birthdays etc but it would always end up an argument over long standing bitterness over something. Eventually I wrote a letter saying that I couldn't talk to her again as it always turned into an emotional roller coaster and it wasn't healthy. I admitted a load of stuff and at the same time got off my chest what I thought of her at the time, and we stopped contact. Another few years later she messaged me on Facebook about something to do with a mutual friend, we got chatting and agreed to meet up for a drink. Everything went well, and we saw each other more often and eventually we started a relationship. During that time talked over those old issues and we both realized that we had matured and had been improved in the areas we previously struggled with due in part to the divorce and also that we were now that much more emotionally mature. We went away on holiday and in secret got remarried at Gretna Green, with two shopkeepers as our witnesses. Seven years later, we live an increasingly self-sustainable life with allotments, two dogs, chickens and have done lots of life laundry to work less and spend as much time as possible together. I'm a full-time mature student, and she has various part-time casual jobs in her field. The less money we have, the happier we have become. We always knew we should be together I think. It was just a matter of timing and maturity. Not me but my parents. They married and had me at a young age. They were very different people in every way. Nothing in common. My mom had depression issues. They divorced for a brief period when I was really young but I don't ever recall knowing they were actually divorced. I never prodded why but my understanding was it just difficult so they split but realized pretty quickly they wanted to work it out. They got back together although they didn't officially remarry for years. I was 8 and they said were getting remarried and that was the first time I found out they were actually divorced lol. Been together 36 years now. My parents were sort of the same. Next year will be their 50th and their 2nd anniversary. But when they lived apart they still saw each other every day. Would have meals together and do errands together. They remarried when my dad was really sick and the doctors thought that he was dying. He is sort of better and my parents live in the same house now. It is not easy but it works for them. My grandpa married my grandma. Then he divorced her and married another woman. Then he divorced that woman and remarried my grandma. Then he divorced my grandma and remarried the second woman again. I'm sorry but this one made me lol. My parents were married for 7 years, then got divorced when I was 5. They fought all the time so when they announced to me that they were getting remarried when I was 11 I was terrified. They were then married for 2 years and had another child together during that time and then proceeded to get divorced again. I recently found out the marriage happened only out of guilt and not real love. All throughout growing up I heard each of their sides of the story until finally I told both of them to never talk to me about each other again. After years of carrying that anger and resentment, I decided I wasn't going to make the same mistake my parents did and I will only marry someone if I truly love them. My sister went the opposite route and refuses to marry because it doesn't mean anything to her. My dad and my stepmom divorced when I was 14, 1994. They went a few years where they barely spoke to each other, except when dad picked up my half brother and half sister. My brother did most of the home maintenance and landscaping around the house until he graduated from high school. After my brother went to college, my dad started cutting the grass for her and doing the home repairs she couldn't do. They soon started going to dinner together once in a while. Then they started hanging out and watching TV together and sometimes it would get late and dad would sleep on the couch. After my sister went to college, he started staying over more and more often and we'd celebrate holidays together again. Whenever they'd have an argument, he'd just go back to his house and give her time to simmer down. This went on for years. Finally, after being divorced for over 20 years, they decided it was stupid to have two separate houses. So they officially got back together and bought a new house. They keep separate bedrooms. Dad downstairs. Stepmom upstairs. So if they have an argument, they can get away and let things cool off. They remind me of a line from a Genesis song. We cannot live together and we cannot live apart. That's the situation and I've known it from the start. 
The older I get, the less surprised I am to find out when married couples have separate bedrooms as a key part of keeping their marriage happy. My mom finally divorced my dad when three of the four of us had moved out, and my youngest sibling, in high school at the time, was mature enough in my mom's correct estimation. To handle the split, she reconnected with a childhood friend, fell in love, and married him. Turns out he was off the deep end, emotionally abused her for years, then killed himself. My dad had always wanted my mom back, and they basically remarried for necessary financial and healthcare reasons. Neither are happy with it, but at least they're familiar with each other. Yeah your dad shouldn't have taken your mom back. My cousin divorced her second husband because she, my cousin, was possibly beating his daughter. Six months later they got remarried and then got divorced a year later because she was cheating on him, which was the reason her first husband divorced her. She's married again now to a very wealthy trust fund baby and has so far managed to either not cheat or not get caught. That checkbook is apparently the only thing that keeps her pants on. If I sound salty, it's because she constantly likes to say the gays ruin the sanctity of marriage even though she's had 3 divorced and was a big portion in 2 other divorces. I'm 30, gay as heck, and have never cheated on a single boyfriend. So take that brook, you freaking see. My grandparents had 6 kids. When my grandmother was pregnant with my mom, my grandfather left my prego grandma for another woman. My grandma ended up eventually remarrying a wonderful man. He raised my mom and her siblings. We'll call him granddad. But my grandma was damaged and never really bonded with my mother. They have always had a cold relationship. Unlike the rest of her siblings. My grandfather ended up having 6 kids with the other woman. Then after 16 years no contact. My grandfather came back. With no warning to my mom. My grandmother promptly divorced granddad and remarried my grandfather. They stayed together till his death just about a decade ago. My grandfather's other children ended up scattered across the foster care system. Their mother abandoned them after my grandfather left. The whole thing was quite horrible actually. My granddad remarried a really nice lady and they are still together. My mom still calls him dad and he is an active member of the family. Granddad and my grandmother get along. But yeah, weird. Your granddad seems like the only nice person out of your three grandparents. I would also use step grandfather to make clear who you are talking about. My fiancé's mom is on her fourth marriage, to her third person. This guy was her second husband, my fiancé's dad was her third, and then she left him to remarry the second guy after almost 40 years. It's totally weird, to be absolutely clear. Husband 1, A. Husband 2, B. Husband 3, C, my in-laws. Husband 4, B, again. My parents did this, married, had my brother a year later, me too after that. They divorced when I was 6 mo old. She remarried to an alcoholic, abusive, drug-addled piece of crap and did a great job at convincing us not to tell dad. Dad moved back in when I was 8. It was freaking Christmas every day, the best. When I was 17 she was supposed to be on a business trip to Montreal. I found the confirmation for her hotel stay at a ski resort in elsewhere and gave it to my dad. She'd been having an affair, moved out shortly after. Haven't seen her in a decade and my life is so much less stressful. Frick her. This would be my parents. They divorced when I was 12 and got back together when I was 14. 10 years later they are still together and they act like nothing never happened. In fact, I'm still not really quite sure what the heck that was all about. Interesting. The first one I've read where they seemed happy before and happy after. Every other story there is some big change in one of the partners that makes the second marriage work. Or else the second marriage appears to have the same problems as the first. My parents never loved each other. Constant intense fights. Finally got divorced when I was 13. Dad bought a house, furnished it, but never moved in. Without showing any affection or explaining anything to me and my younger siblings, they remarried. Then they divorced again when I was 17. Also, they were very against therapy, which we all could have really benefited from. We're all fricked up now. So if you're a parent and you're denying your child mental health treatment or ignoring their need for it, don't be surprised when they grow up and go no contact with you. Emotional neglect and abuse is real, and damages every aspect of a person's life for a very long time. 
possibly forever, even with treatment later in life. Also, some people just shouldn't be parents. Not everyone is physically financially emotionally well suited for it. Having children is a choice. Children are not an extension of yourself. They are not your therapist or best friend. And having them doesn't fix relationships. Seriously. My wife divorced me after we had been together 4 years, citing lack of attention, private life, understanding, etc. She also had issues with alcohol, self-esteem, and severe depression stemming from her childhood. I was a full-time pre-med student with two part-time jobs. She dated around for a little less than a year then told me that she wanted me back. She's seeing a psychiatrist to try and find a medication that works for her and only drinks on special occasions. I'm down to one full time job and my last year in undergrad. I've also learned to try and take more time just for her, learn to avoid living only to work, schedule dates, and just hang out with her more often. Hopefully everything continues to be smooth sailing because I love that woman more than life itself. As a woman in your wife's situation, good on you. I hope you too make it through this. My parents divorced when I was like 4, and my mom remarried. They divorced when I was 12. When I was about 20 my parents got remarried to each other, for practical purposes which I don't entirely understand, but it has to do with my dad's really good free healthcare and my mom didn't have any, but mostly because my brother is disabled and if one of them died it would be easier for my brother to be taken care of if they had been married. I'm not sure of the details and I didn't approve of the marriage. It was only supposed to be on paper but somehow 15 years later they live together and have separate bedrooms and snipe at each other all the time. I guess I'm glad that they're taking care of each other, and they're not romantically involved but they both seem fine with the situation and it works. Financially, they're both retired and just hang out watching TV in different rooms lol. My ex's parents did this. The father could never hold down a job, would either get let go or just leave it because he didn't like it every few months whilst the mother was working her butt off trying to set up her own baking business completely off her own back whilst he spent most of their money on booze nightly. Before she started her business they both worked in a store and he started having an affair with the manager right under his wife's nose. Everyone apparently knew about it but her. He also cheated on her many, many times bummed around, eventually she'd throw him out to his sisters, who also never worked a day in her life but would boast about all the latest gadgets the government paid for, or she'd have him sleep on their couch. They broke up, I can't remember if they actually fully divorced or just became estranged, and then a few years ago remarried, then he did it all over again, their grandmother got really sick and put into hospital, he slept with the nurse, he really was is a piece of crap guy with the gift of the gab could talk his way out of anything. The mother would sometimes reminisce with me over an old boyfriend she had when she was younger and how it didn't work out. But she made it sound like that guy was her soulmate, watching her forgive her husband over and over again as she brought in the money working her butt off. It was terrible. She's an incredible woman. Remarrying fix nothing but she knew that anyway. Turns out the ex was showing so many similarities to his father that I jumped ship before it got to that. His mother even told me after our breakup. I completely understand why. I love her still and hope she finds happiness. As an entrepreneur she really should know how to stand up for herself and advocate for herself. You've got to be assertive to be respected. My mother and father divorced when I was 6. Dad used to abuse us. Both physically and emotionally. And my mom got a bit of it as well. She told him that if he were to do something despicable again, she would divorce him immediately. This is after all the crap we as a family had to deal with. He immediately cheated on her, and it ended with said divorce. My dad moved an hour away, leaving my mom to work three jobs and use food stamps just to afford to feed three children and herself. While my dad, who happened to be the breadwinner, was living comfortably, my dad fell into a deep depression. Because he knew he screwed up, but decided to keep going, knowing that if he were to fix himself and become a better man, he could have another chance to be a true father and husband. While visiting him, we three, my older sis, younger bro, and I, could see how he was improving. Slowly but surely, for two years he tried improving his life and his relationship toward his family, with the end goal he would remarry his wife, the true love of his life. As he told me, he stopped seeing other women after a few months after the divorce, he quit drinking, 
he quit watching violent TV. He was trying his best to be kind. Overall he was becoming better. At the halfway point in their divorce, divorce was for 2 years. So this is a year into the divorce, my mom and dad started talking again. My dad tried to convince her he was becoming a better man, and that if she took him back in, he would show how much he had improved. She declined and said a little more time would be a better idea. The following day, he locked himself in his closet and put a gun in his mouth, about to pull the trigger before he eventually broke down and sobbed for hours. My mom has told me for years after, that she knew he was about to commit suicide. Even though they were miles from each other, dad also confirmed his near suicide. This was the starting point of their bonding. My dad continued trying to get better, and eventually moved into the house next to my mom's. It was rented out by a great guy who became close friends with both my mom and my dad during their divorce. When he felt he was much more emotionally stable, my mom began seeing his improvement, and we kids got to see him a lot more. After another year, my dad eventually proposed to my mom again. I don't know the details, since I haven't asked nor do I want to since it's a bit personal for them. But they truly felt in love again, as their bond was restored after all this time. Since remarrying, my dad has become a fantastic person, and mom, although frustrated with him sometimes, still loves him a lot. We've improved a lot since then as a family. My dad remembers the man he once was, but he doesn't like to think that was him before he changed for the better. He thinks the second marriage is his true marriage to my mom. They've been remarried for 13 years and counting. I'm 19 currently. I think I put onion on my eyes accidentally. This is my colleague at work. Married husband one quite young. According to her she cheated and he was unreasonable about work so they divorced without making a proper go of it discussing anything. Husband 1 had been married even before this to a young woman who accidentally got pregnant. My colleague then marries husband 2 and stays with him for 20 years though he's abusive. Divorced last year. This month she remarried husband 1. They have had no couples counseling and he doesn't like to talk about feelings. He did mention the cheating occurred 35 years ago whilst drunk he's an alcoholic but neither will talk through their issues i just can't see this ending well i suggested they try and build a good foundation for this marriage by having date nights couples counseling going through their issues but she won't force him and he won't talk about anything because he is a builder i couldn't imagine not talking to my so about our feelings and hopes and dreams what a crap show he and I met the year after I graduated high school. He was a senior. We had an on and off relationship for the next 3 years. And then I got pregnant. Back then, 1993, I thought that we had to get married. And he did it out of a sense of responsibility. It lasted 10 months. We divorced, shared custody of our daughter, and did well for about a year and a half. Then we started dating again. Then we moved in together. Then we got remarried, and it lasted 3, 1 stroke 2 years. I thought of him as the love of my life for the longest time, but just recently I realized that the man that I met and married 5 years after the second divorce, the man that I have 6 children with, bought a house with, have built a life with, he is the love of my life. I had been reminiscent of a relationship that had never been very good to begin with. I had romanticized it, until I went with the our daughter to visit him. He never got remarried, and he still thinks that he is the coolest guy in the room. I used to think that he was too. A US friend married a Vietnamese girl to secure his visa for Vietnam, via some broker. He divorced her after about 2 years when he didn't need the visa anymore, with mutual agreement. But they spent considerable time together and meanwhile fell in love. About a year later he proposed and they decided to marry again, but now for real. They had to get a lawyer. Because at local municipal office the civil servant said he couldn't marry the same person again. He got divorced. Why would he want to marry her again? That must have given a traditional religious local city clerk a total processing failure. Redditors who realize their spouse is a completely different person after marriage. Were there any red flags that you ignored while dating? If so, what were they? Yeah, she was really worried about some of my female friends stealing me away from her, to the point of not allowing me to interact with them. It's not that I don't trust you, it's that I don't trust her. Yeah, she cheated on me. That's why she didn't trust her. 
the biggest red flag was immediately after I proposed she said are you sure, because I'm freaking crazy, then laughed. There is truth behind most humor. Later she was diagnosed with PTSD from a physically and mentally abusive relationship that she got into shortly after her father died relatively young and unexpectedly. She has extensive professional experience caring for people with severe mental disorders and in retrospect I felt like she knew how to mask her symptoms well. For example, she let on that she was capable of setting healthy boundaries for herself and that she was emotionally strong and independent. I am attracted to both of those traits, but the opposite is true. While she isn't crazy, what does it really mean in any sort of constructive sense anyway? She must or minimize a lot of issues she deals with at first, became dependent, and then physically aggressive and emotionally abusive towards me. After she physically restrained me and wouldn't let me leave a room until she was done screaming at me, I told her physical aggression was a deal breaker, and said if she gets physical again it's over. She told me she would get physically aggressive again she sounded almost proud of it actually. She did. I stayed true to my word. The divorce should be finalized next month. I really appreciate how you didn't demonize this woman. Your post is full of compassion and honesty. Hard things to present while separating. Sorry you had to go through this. Several lies were told at the beginning but there was always an explanation and a story for it. Previous divorce but didn't spend much time with their kids. Caught several times still on dating apps but said they were just friends to keep in touch with. Never admitted to any faults of their own and all of the previous failed relationships were always the other person's fault. Couldn't keep the same group of friends. Very charismatic but couldn't keep a story straight. She didn't finish high school. After we got married I found out that she couldn't see anything moderately difficult through to the end. Including our marriage. She ghosted me while I was at work 3 years 3 months 1 week and 3 days in. I haven't seen her since. Same as others. Immediate family relationships were overlooked ignored. Her parents were gigantic enablers. Her parents didn't believe in counseling. Since her father was a drug rep, there was a pill for everything. As soon as we had our first kid, stress and anxiety showed its face. She turned to Xanax and Ambien. She never learned any coping skills. I was 29 when we divorced. A drug rep who doesn't believe in therapy is the worst kind. I'm sorry you went through that. I had an opposite experience. She showed green flags after marriage. Prior to marriage she was very meek with anyone other than me. Her parents were very strict so even as an adult she was too afraid to tell them we were even engaged. What they said went even though we were living together as roommates. More than once she called their house to let them know she was going out as if she wasn't allowed to otherwise. There were issues with a few friends that clashed with me. They were pretty toxic and I don't placate that type of behavior so I'm not always well received. Doesn't bother me. And I saw her comforting people who were treating her poorly after we clashed over it more than once. She's a bleeding heart and couldn't stand to see people upset even when the upset was caused by their own misdeeds. I felt like she didn't always have my back. But I never thought it was something I needed, and I would always have hers. She let people walk all over her while I'm the first person to put my foot down. In that aspect we were the most different. Before marriage she also had a huge amount of medical issues and I was more than willing to accept a life of working to keep her alive, and supporting her as a stay at home wife when she got too sick. Then we got married, and she changed. I think she finally saw us as a package deal. While my girlfriend was meek and weak my wife became outspoken not only socially but politically. She started calling me on my crap. Something I appreciate greatly. I like learning about things I can work on. But would absolutely slay people who weren't treating us well. We ended a lot of friendships that weren't healthy and were stringing along because of her bleeding heart after the wedding. It was like she was a phoenix rising from the ashes of crap friends. She is still medically frail but I think she sees a future to fight for now. The fact that I make more than her isn't just a fact now, it's a challenge. She wants to be the breadwinner so that I can quit my job and go back to my career in art. I did great but the market was so unpredictable I needed to leave my dream for stability. She is still beautiful, caring, and gentle, but since being married that caring aspect includes caring for herself. She doesn't let anyone dictate her life, especially her parents, and because of that she has healthier relationships with everyone, including me. 
I would also like to state that once she knew she locked me down she opened her own kink floodgates and sex has never been the same. We do things to each other that most churches won't even preach against in sermons because they are ashamed to discuss the acts. That ring and those vows somehow told her she was worthy of self respect and self expression. I love her. It was like she was a phoenix rising from the ashes of crap friends. I realized it was a possibility since I met her but I don't care because I love her. She's extremely emotionally unstable and the recent death of her brother spiraled her into a dark place. From there she was diagnosed with bipolar and now a lot of things from the past make sense. She is compliant with her meds and attends therapy. We are best friends so we communicate well. I love her very much and I'm here to support her no matter what even though she is an extremely different person now. I'm sure I'm different too, but hopefully in a way that is beneficial to her. It was a hard lesson for me to learn that love cannot cure someone's depression, and I'm still learning how to cope with this huge change myself. People who are married to someone living with mental illness and struggling, don't be afraid to ask for help. Sometimes your reality gets so skewed living with your partner's illness every day, you forget some things are not normal or typical behavior for people who do not have depression or that particular illness. My fear was that her irrational behavior would become normal for me and I wouldn't see the warning signs if she was starting to struggle again. My own therapy sessions keep me in check. Thanks for letting me vent Reddit. I understand that one. Helping someone who is always depressed made me depressed. It becomes a chore and a duty. That feeling in your gut, like a silent tug that something isn't right, but you ignore it because you so desperately want someone to love you and be in love. Well, that feeling will eat away at you, until it becomes too big to ignore, and the only choice left is to see how things really are, not how you want them to be. Don't ignore your gut. When I met my husband he was a bit of a neat freak. And that didn't bother me but I later found out that it was because his first wife was verbally abusive, in my opinion. She'd make him feel worthless, call him stupid, ugly, etc. I guess he tried to please her by always having things just right. She ended up cheating and leaving. He and I met shortly thereafter. Well I went the opposite direction. Told him he's perfect, just be yourself and don't worry about being a neat freak etc. He's still my perfect guy almost 20 years later, but he doesn't clean a dang thing anymore and I almost regret talking him out of that behavior because it clearly wasn't his natural tendency to be neat. All's well that ends well. Happy story in a depressing thread. Thanks for this. Telling her girlfriend's personal things about you. I don't mean the size of your, insert whatever here, but the things you confided in her about, like the abuse you suffered as a child or that you pick at your face, always comparing you to her successful friends or family members, questioning every decision you make, every single one, shooting down every suggestion or decision, until one of her friends or family makes the same exact suggestion or decision. We met when I was 16 and he was 25. We lived together a number of years before we got married. We went together really well and I thought it was a good match. Almost the day after we were married his family decided to set rules. He bought the house that we all lived in, it was large enough and we had the basement suite. We weren't allowed out after a certain time. His mother and father could berate me as much as they pleased. He himself became very controlling. I wasn't allowed to finish school or work and he would use these to mock and guild me after saying I was a burden and a leech, a gold digger. They all decided for me that I would have his children and we would all stay in the house together. Soon after I was taken off birth control I was no longer allowed out of the house without an escort. I wasn't allowed to see my mother more than once a week. Everyone thought we were the perfect couple. I was isolated and after my mom moved away I had no one to turn to. He gained a lot of weight and started to tell me how fat and unattractive I was. He started looking at a lot of escort ads for Asian women. He brought over friends for me. 16 year old girls. He met on MySpace and then would rule over them. I never had his baby. We were married when I was 19 and I was gone by 25. I ran away in the middle of the night. I never tried to get alimony or spousal support. I left all of my belongings behind. He still has made the process of divorce difficult and I am almost 31 now. It's finally going through. He still lives in the basement. I had no freaking idea what I was walking into and I lived with them all for years before the control started. It was unbelievable how fast they changed. 
I'm the kid of two fairly narcissistic people. The red flags I've learned to avoid from growing up in my house were blaming trivial things on each other, a need to physically attack or break something when angry, attention seeking behavior, seen my father throw himself downstairs or start chugging liquor just to get a reaction from my mom, especially if it's a rim totally going to kill myself unless you intervene moment, selfishness, like going out for food and never asking or offering anything to anyone else, drug abuse, not regular drug use, but using drugs to cope with emotions that should normally be confronted. X, am mad or I can't deal with the situation so I need to drink smoke, etc. Hiding money, on the flip side needing to hide money because one person spends all of it leaving you high and dry come time to pay bills. Prioritizing one's happiness over everyone else's. For example planning every vacation around one person's likes and dislikes. This is a huge red flag emo. Total inability to take responsibility for anything. Literally everything bad is someone else's fault. Inversely. Taking credit for anything positive. Vindictive behavior. Can't count how many times I've seen my father break my mother's crap because he knew it would hurt her. Saying things you don't mean with the specific intent of upsetting someone. Treating others like their only purpose is to entertain you. I basically grew up in a red flag factory. The biggest one for me was finding a condom wrapper in the trash when I picked up a shampoo bottle for reading material while taking a dump. It was only my fiancé and I living there and we didn't use condoms. I was heartbroken and when I confronted her later that day she told me that she found one while cleaning our adult drawer and wondered if she could put her foot in it. At the time it seemed to be a perfectly reasonable explanation. Or I was just so afraid of the truth and heartbreak that I desperately wanted to believe something that wouldn't be painful. We married a year later, and after 5 months of marriage I caught her in a web of lies that led to a co-worker's house. Even after getting upset with her and telling her it was over I had a change of heart and asked her to see a marriage counselor with me. She refused and left me for my co-worker. Sometimes the refusal of counseling is better than wasting your time. The pictures. We had to take a million freaking pictures of us doing stuff. Any stuff. Everything was on social media with a picture. Every post was my marine. Every conversation was about her being a marine girlfriend, etc. It was all for show. I was a trophy. When we got married she quit going to school and quit her well paying job. When she'd meet people and they asked what she did she said she was a military wife, etc. We divorced and she has a kid now and everything is about being a mom. She just changed situations as far as I can tell. She went full depender. Back when I was married and he was in the marines nothing enraged me more than the military wife. Toughest job in the corps. No B. It's not. Not by a long shot. This was the case with my parents. My mother didn't discover my father's mental problems until later. The why is that they got married way too fast. Two months. And bipolar disorders have natural ups and downs. She had only seen the up. Textbook example of why you shouldn't marry unless you've been with the person for a while. Oh dang. As a friend of a bipolar person the ups are exhilarating. He turns into a really outgoing friend and it's great. But you've also gotta be there for the downs. Cause that's what friends do. Hope you're doing okay. My ex. When we first started going out. Would have a little too much to drink every few months. She would say each time. As I was holding her over the toilet. Never again. Well about 10 years later it was still happening. She ended up meeting some girlfriends that were all of the same well lubricated frame of mind. Things got very messy after that and I felt that I was no longer an equal partner. But a babysitter. When that happens. There really is no way of coming back. My ex was like this. Would always get way too drunk. She'd get angry with me while drunk and 90% of the time it'd end in her crying while I'm trying to console her. She made friends who all they'd do was go out and get drunk. Ended up almost every time her hating the night. He didn't necessarily change. But I woke up to an issue. His mother is overly involved. She wants to come stay weekends with us without warning. When he told her he had proposed she told him he should have waited. She was bitchy at our wedding. And when we told her I was pregnant she also said we should have waited. So, basically she has a negative opinion on us. He is a mama's boy too. So I bet it hurts. But he won't admit. I just wish she'd butt out. Yes, 
I ignored some pretty big red flags and to this day I am not sure why I went ahead with the marriage. The first that I thought of was ignoring the fact that he was texting this one girl and lying about it. The texts didn't seem too crazy at first, but he would still lie and say things like I wasn't texting her or I just had a question about work. Then I also ignored when leading up to the wedding and him leaving for boot camp. He seemed to just not care anymore. He was already starting to get too big of a head because he had lost so much weight. Then on our wedding day he ignored me pretty much the entire reception. His excuse was I want to hang out with my friends because I am leaving for boot camp in 3 days. I should have just annulled the marriage right there. But I stuck around for another year and a half and it only got worse. Found girls clothes in our room after visiting my family in our home state and then coming back to our apt. He would tell me my opinions didn't matter because I was nothing but a civilian. Ended after a year and a half of marriage. He still tells people I left him because he was deploying and I didn't want to wait for him. Six years later and I am much happier than I was then. Your opinion does not matter to me civilian. Please step away. She cheated to be with me. No one ever listens. Do they? People need to make their mistakes. It seems. As it begins. So it ends. Always. Not me, but my mum. Dad was a perfect gentleman. Then came the wedding night. He had had a lot to drink and mum was just trying to put him to bed and he says to her shut up B. I own you now. I would have left there and then. Got an annulment. Mum stayed and two years later had my brother. Two years after that she had me. Five years later and after a lot of emotional and physical abuse. Staying for the kids. My brother says to her do we have to live with that. He scares me. We packed up everything the next day while he was at work and left. She's now been happily married to my stepdad for the last 10 plus years while my dad is a lonely pathetic living by himself in a crappy block of granny flats who hasn't seen either of his kids in 15 plus years. Ro, your brother might have saved all of your lives by asking that. I'm glad you all got out of that situation. I doubt this will reach many people but it may help someone. I wasn't married but my now ex and I dated for 6 years. I thought I would get past her being a mean person. She said that her past boyfriend had a large impact on her and that she was mean to people now because of it. She had a malicious mindset where if someone hurt her it was her job to hurt them back, which was me more often than not. If someone has a personality that you don't like, get out, they won't change. That's who they are. It will only get worse, and you will be miserable. Edit. I want to reinforce that they won't change. I'm serious. There's no maybe they will maybe they won't. The person will not change. Habits you can work through those. That's a lot to put on yourself to take that on but it can happen if they want to. But personality? No. That's going to be them until the day you die. Dealing with this right now. Red flags are something you don't pay attention to until it's too late. My ex-husband had all the red flags of a sociopath. He would test to see how far he could go with making things up. And he learned what he could do to cover them up. He would use flowers or spend money on me to hide things he was doing. I learned what I was and wasn't allowed to say in public. Example none of his friends knew he had a 12 year old child. I spent little time with friends and family because he would convince me that they weren't supportive or make up things that I would believe because I trusted him. I left my career because he convinced me his pursuit was more important. Lots of things happened over the 10 years we were together. Most of them now I know were just lies to get him to where he wanted to be in life. In the end, he had a 6 month affair, and the flags were all there. But after years of being manipulated I didn't know what to believe. He managed to date her and then moved to be with her on my dime by convincing me it had to do with his job. I even paid his rent for the first couple of months in hope he would come back. He manipulated everyone around him including his friends and even his boss. Now he is a person I don't even recognize because he's taken on the personality of his girlfriend. I feel bad for her because the same thing is happening to her but in a way I feel like she deserves it. If you're looking for an outline of what to look for I would say. 1. Have you given up something you love for that person? 2. Do gifts tend to arrive after something you weren't quite sure was the truth? 3. Do you feel like you're begging the person to stay with you all the time? 4. Do you find yourself above and beyond to please someone just for their affection? Relationships should be relatively easy. Sure there will be fights and times where you aren't sure. But if you're giving up your values or your personality it's time to go. 
Strangely enough, no, I've spent years racking my brain, but nothing, no clue at all, while dating. He was sex positive and had no issue with the number of sex partners I had had. He also knew that I had been in an abusive relationship, and told me so many times how nothing a woman could do could justify hitting her. He was so warm and gentle and kind. Then we got married, and suddenly I was a W who didn't respect herself, had more sausage in me than a fat man at an all-you-can-eat buffet, and I was cheating on him with a married co-worker that I had met two weeks before. I was weak for letting my ex beat me up, and I was stupid for not leaving the first time it happened. He shouted at me for over an hour while I was stuck in the car with him that I deserved it for staying. It was my fault. I stayed married to him. God help me, but I never really trusted him again, nor did I ever open up to him about anything really personal. It turns out he was a closet misogynist. Never saw it coming. One of the most underrated predictors of spousal behavior is the parents. When we become husband or wife, we emulate our examples of what a husband or wife is. I was surprised when I started instinctually doing all the things my dad used to. My wife started doing all the things that drove me nuts about my mother-in-law. I found that things got better when I started acting like my father-in-law. It's weird, but it's just how things work. You have no idea how much I think this may help me. Thank you for sharing. What is your Tinder horror story? My roommate loves Tinder, and she's brought back numerous visitors, which is fine. Except for the fact that the apartment is tiny and we share a room. And also the fact that my roommate doesn't really care what I end up seeing. And, as it turns out, most guys don't care about having another girl in the room either. Some take it as an opportunity to ask me to join. My roommate is my Tinder nightmare. Finally, started seeing a girl off Tinder. It was going well for about 2 weeks and thought she was pretty cool. Then things started getting weird. She used to always joke about killing me. I thought it was okay the first few times but then it got annoying. I told her to stop and she kept doing it. I dk if it was because she thought it was funny that it freaked me out or what. Anyways told me she has a shotgun in her room. Yikes. Long story short I told her I didn't want to see her anymore. She didn't like that. For the next 3 weeks she's absolutely hounding me. Calls me constantly. Shows up at my work asking for me. Keeps coming over to my apartment. She actually knocked on my door for 30 minutes. When I didn't answer she went around back and started knocking on my bedroom window. Got really concerned for a while but eventually she gave up. I went on a date with a guy and the entire time he was talking about how men are superior and how there have been scientific studies to show that women have an emotional reaction to the color red when they see it. I wonder why he was single. I'm probably too late but here it goes. Sorry for the wall of text. My first and only Tinder date I started talking to a cute guy. We hit it off really well. We'll call him Greg. Greg lived in a town nearly an hour away so we texted for about 2 weeks before we decided to meet due to schedules. During this time Greg consistently attempted to wow with his food knowledge. I work in the fine dining restaurant industry, often telling me about what meal he was cooking for him and his roommates each night. After several days of talking he then asks me to come to his house so he would be able to cook for me. I oblige figuring what's the worst that could happen I've talked to him several times and felt okay about the whole situation. The day comes and we meet somewhere neutral and I follow him to his house. All the while I'm explaining how excited he is to cook for me. We arrive at his place everything is going really great. He's exactly as I pictured him and his personality fits me perfect. Dinner time rolls around and he tells me he needs to go downstairs to begin prep. I become eager and say I'd love to help. He insists I stay on the couch and relax. We continue to talk across rooms and I can't see what's going on in the kitchen. He puts something in the oven and says it will be ready in just a bit and that he made extra in case I was hungry. 15 minutes late Greg leaps off the couch to a timer and runs to the kitchen. He brings sauces first saying that they are the best part. He lays ketchup, 
ranch and barbecue sauce on the table. I begin to get confused wondering what he made as he refused to tell me announcing that he wanted to keep it a secret. Greg returns to the kitchen to retrieve the plates. He walks in and carries a turkey platter to the table. I gaze into what had to be no less than 3 bags of frozen fries he had displayed on a turkey platter for our dinner. He looks at me eagerly awaiting my reaction for me to lose it. I begin uncontrollably laughing and his smile drops as I say this is great thank you. Assuming this was a gag meal and he had prepared dinner to follow. No Greg invited me to dinner to cook me his specialty. Frozen french fries. They were delicious fries. And the sauce was the best part. Met up with a really hot but curious girl. I'm a lesbian. This girl had only ever been with men and wanted to experiment with girls. She was stupidly hot. Like hot hot. We matched and we chatted for like 2 days. I soon found out we had no common ground at all. Like. None. However. She wanted to meet and me being the frisky les gremlin I am agreed just because she was hot and I could take her girl on girl virginity. We agreed to meet one day. Picked her up and we went for drinks. Walked back to mine and chatted a little more over alcoholic root beer and breaking bad. We started making out. She took off my bra. I took off hers. She took my pants off. I took hers off. We started kissing. Touching. Feeling. She starts fingering me. I can tell straight away she is a first timer. She starts jabbing at my poor vag with her half inch acrylics. I tell her to slow down a little and be a little more gentle about it. All of a sudden, she bursts into tears and says she's not ready. I tell her it's fine blah blah. She ends up staying at my place and we cuddle for the night until I sobered up enough to drive her back home in the morning. Later the next day I go for a pee and realize it stings like a bee and my pee smells dreadful and is cloudy. Run to the doctors because I'm a casual hypochondriac and take a pee sample. Doctor sticks the paper in my pee and yup straight away it shows I have a UT. I didn't pee after little miss Pecurious scratched my insides out. B gave me a UT and blue balls. Comma blue balls. Blue walls. I dated someone I met from Tinder for a month. Seemed good on paper. Master student. Yoga teacher. Cultured. Etc. Found out she was doing H and didn't consider that a big problem. I actually had to explain to her the definition of a high functioning addict because she felt that having a job and going to school meant the H thing wasn't a problem. We broke up and she went back to her junkie XBF. Bullet dodged. Edit. LOL all the people peeming me trying to confirm if I was simultaneously dating their own crappy GF. If you find yourself wondering if I'm describing your GF, you should just break up with her immediately. My Tinder horror story is very funny looking back. The girl comes over. She couldn't get there until 7.30 ish. I had some pizza warming in the oven just in case she was hungry. For some stupid reason, I put the pizza in the box to warm in the oven. It was a real pizza from a pizza place. She wasn't hungry, so we jump right into making out. Clothes get strewn. We head back towards the bedroom. I go into the kitchen and turn the oven off, but leave the pizza in there. A few minutes later, I am going down on her and I hear a beeping. I lift up my head and say what was that. She says I think it was a truck backing up. I hop up just to check in the oven. Without my glasses on, I had accidentally missed off by an eighth of an inch and my crappy oven went to broil. The beeping was telling me it was preheated. I stupidly opened the oven and smoke comes billowing out. Then the box bursts into flames. I am standing there butt butt naked and I start yelling frick frick oh crap. Then she comes running in totally naked as I pull the box out thinking I am going to pour water on it. It was stressful I don't know what I was thinking. I set it on the stove and then she hits it with a dish towel. Sparks and burnt crap go all over my kitchen but the box is still on fire. My sink is so full of crap that I can't get the box in there. She yells bathtub so I pick up a goddamn burning box and run to my bathroom over the carpet. My shower mat and past the shower curtain. All very flammable. The entire top of the pizza box was either in flames or charred and flaking off as I ran. Remember, we are both totally naked this whole time. So imagine a naked, screaming man running through his crappy apartment with a burning pizza box in his hands. That was me. This was a date. I throw the box in the bathtub and turn the shower on. She was so super cool about it. She helped me clean everything up. And then we got dressed and just stood outside for a while. She could tell I was really freaked out. And kept reassuring me all was well. 
Then we went back in and I went down on her again. Then we had sex. We still hang out often and have a lot of fun together. I still have burn marks in my bathtub and on my bathroom door. Comma I stupidly opened the oven and smoke comes billowing out. Then the box bursts into flames. To extinguish an oven fire just close the oven door and turn off the oven. The inside of the oven can easily handle any flames and the oven door staying closed deprives the fire of the oxygen that needs to keep burning. I had been on a couple of dates with this girl that I met on Tinder and learned that she was really into the rockabilly scene. I found out that a local nightclub was hosting a rockabilly themed night and so I took her. She had dressed to the nines and we were having a great time in the club. Suddenly this guy accidentally tipped a drink on her 50s style dress. The guy apologized profusely. She storms over to grab her coat and bag and on the way out she just punches the guy in the face. Everyone in the club was shocked. I took her outside and told her she couldn't react like that and that's when she took her heel off and hit me square in the face for siding with the guy. Blood everywhere. I never answered her calls after that. Oh, and she used to be a stripper and cam general. This adds nothing to the story but I just like telling people. Pew pew. I met this guy on Tinder and we had a couple really fun dates. I was pretty into him. So on our third date, I decided I wanted to have sex with him. He took me out for a really nice date and then he invited me back to his place for a glass of wine. One thing led to another and we started making out on his couch, fully clothed, but this lasted forever. I was ready to go, if you know what I mean. I didn't want to make out the whole night. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and I took off all of my clothes. Then he sits up, still fully clothed, and looks at me, and says, I can't have sex with you, I have a STD. Possibly most awkward moment of my life. I tried to be super nice about it, but I promptly got dressed and left. And as many of my friends have pointed out, I am extremely grateful that he told me. That's really big of him. Nothing but props to that dude. En route to the worst date ever, this guy texted me from the burrito place we were meeting. To tell me he'd already ordered me the salad. I repeat, salad, at a burrito place. Also, was this the past? Was I now incapable of placing my own food order? Anyway, after arriving, with my salad ready, beside his plate of tacos, he spent the next half an hour telling me about his model ex-girlfriend and how passionate their breakup sex had been last weekend. The final straw was, even after telling him I wasn't a big fan of smoking, he literally asked a stranger for cigarettes and then chain smoked them beside me. Way 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 late to the party apparently, but I feel obliged to share my best friend's story. He you philosophool, I think was his username, died recently at age 23 from a massive seizure in his sleep, but he loved to tell this story, so I'll tell it here. So at least if I ever forget it I know at least I can find it. So this philosophal is a shy guy, timid, a bit neurotic. Dates are hard to come by for him but when he's on them, he's nice and charming and fairly handsome. I'll give him that, so he doesn't do too bad once he's got a shot. Anyway, all us lads are on Tinder at this stage and we all have the philosophy always swipe, whichever way is. Yes so you get maximum matches and take it from there. Now there is this one girl who looks a bit rough, a bit unkept I'll say and her description read. I love giving BJ's. Now Philosophal was a very compassionate guy and talked to literally everyone he matched with and gave everyone at least one date. He didn't match with many but bless him he dated them all, including his GF up until his death. May she never read this. Full stop. He travels on a train to date this girl at her house. He recounted that from being picked up at the train station the car was full of litter. The footwall was 90% litter, 10% his feet. And the woman from the photo, she had aged, not too kindly, either. And the house was run down, dirty, every room doubling as a bedroom for some cavern dweller from that part of town. My memory gets a little hazy here but she asks him if he'd like tea. He says he would and he has some chamomile. In his words the one clean thing I had in this house was that tea cup and a chamomile tea. After a while of small talk and awkward experience she asked him if he wanted a blowjob, assuring him she was really good at these. He finds a spot on the bed among the rubbish, cup of chamomile in hand, his only refuge of cleanliness. As the constant background dripping is drowned out by excessive slurping off his half mast he cuddles his warm tea thinking only of home. 
Man the way he described it was a very funny and less like he's repulsed. Oh crap my time to shine. Now I swear all is true. This girl I've been sweet talking for a few weeks and I finally set up a date to meet up and go out to this nice restaurant and have dinner. The night comes and she asks me to pick her up because her car is in the shop. I head over to the address and it's this confusing apartment complex but quickly find her outside her building. But she asked me to meet her family so I go and meet her mother who is the sweetest woman ever and her father who was quiet but kind. After we leave she immediately turns to me and says can we pick up my cousin I'm shocked but say sure. I didn't really question it. We head to a really sketchy neighborhood in San Jose and pick up this super skinny tatted up white guy and he asks who the frick I am and I was about to say her date but she cuts me off and says oh just a friend don't worry about him and he says alright babe. He then guides me two cities over to this crappy house where this really nicely dressed Asian guy meets us outside and takes us into the garage where a cracked out skinny Mexican guy and pregnant white chicken sits us down in between. Then and asked our poison. My date said weed along with the Mexican guy and the cousin. The pregnant chick says I'm fine. Weed is bad for the baby. And then pulls out a crack pipe and starts smoking something. The Asian guy said pay up and everyone looks towards me and I said alright and pulled $60 out of my wallet and asked if that's enough and the Asian guy said it's fine. He leaves the garage taking my get the guest soda and comes back 10 awkward minutes later and stoned with nothing saying sorry guys I'm out of weed. But my dealer is on his way. 20 minutes later he shows up screaming and throwing weed at the Mexican guy and just leaving. Then the Asian guy asked if anyone had a pipe and I said I did and they all got happy and I went outside to my car and drive off because I'm pretty sure I would have died that night. I had been talking to this girl on Tinder for a while and we decide we wanted to smash. The problem is I had asked my roommate if I could have the room later. Apparently, unlike the rest of the animals you people seem to have as roommates. So when I went to sign this girl in, we have a proctor in the lobby at my university's dorms. My roommate and several other friends of mine placed a bluetooth speaker in my room and hid in the hallway, waiting for me to get back. I didn't see them and things started to get hot and heavy when, let's get it on started playing from somewhere in the room. I started searching and after 5 minutes, while the song I just had sex was finishing playing, I found the bluetooth speaker under my roommate's bed behind his dresser. Yes I had to move both of them. I found the power button but not before the wonderful sound of hardcore pornography filled the room. The two of us decided to call it so we threw on some clothes I walked her past all six of the bastards. I never saw her again. Comma unlike the rest of the animals you people seem to have as roommates. Comma my roommate and several other friends of mine placed a bluetooth speaker in my room and hid in the hallway. <laughs> Met this girl on tinder. Invited her into bed. She accepts. Comes over. We have fantastic sex. A lot. Same thing the next night. Thing is, she's moving to Montana in a few weeks for a job. A cook position in a national park. She invites me out there. I look into the job and eventually get it. We decide to start dating. Met twice. Known her for a month. I'm an idiot. To keep it exclusive at adult summer camp there in Montana. I get out there. She freaks out and breaks up with me because she has cancer. Cancels the breakup does it again the next night. I agree and say it's over. Proceeds to dong block me constantly throughout the summer and we scream at each other in the kitchen. Poor choices all around. As a man in a long term pre tinder relationship I'm really living vicariously through these stories and they are outstanding. Bless you people. This didn't actually come about through tinder, but rather through an equivalent app. So, I meet the guy there and he's just incredible. Clever. Good looking funny. You get the type. The only catch is that he doesn't live in my city. After a couple of weeks of messaging and phone calls, we decide to meet up and we settle on that I would be going to him because I'd never been to his city and that seemed like a fun little adventure. Right? Wrong? The big day comes and I embark on the 2.5 hour train journey and I get all excited and I can't wait to get off the train. And then he's not at the platform when I get off. Try to call him to no avail and after 4 hours of waiting, I decide to take the next train back home. Haven't heard from him since. TL. DR. Met a guy from a different city relatively far away. Stands me up when I go out there to meet him. I don't really have a horror story, since I've gotten about one date out of Tinder which went alright. 
but I've been rejected plenty, the highlight of which was this girl, who seemed pretty interesting and was reasonably attractive, so I swiped right, and it turned out that we matched, hooray, so, I send her a message, something clever, along the lines of hey, a match, did we just become best friends though, I can't take credit for that one, I did steal that from reddit step brothers, happily, she responded rather promptly, so I was eager to read what she'd sent, cause for the most part women just kinda ignore me, anyway, I open it up and all it said was I swiped the wrong way, that woman is a savage. Matched with a girl, and she was quite pretty in the face. All of her pictures were mostly of just her face upper body, but I didn't pay any mind. She initiated the conversation, and she was immediately into hooking up, so of course I invited her over. She gets there and I answer the door, and turns out she was about 6 feet 5 inches. I am 5 feet 8 inches on a good day. I let out an audible holy crap and she picked me up and carried me to the bedroom like a baby. No regrets advice welcome so i went on three dates with this dude and we hooked up the last time at his house things end with a typical fade away i was fine with it we weren't very compatible and i noticed a few minor red flags six months later he starts emailing me obviously looking for a reenactment of our summer fling when i turn down his advances he sends me a screenshot of myself in his bedroom while we were hooking up half a year ago so obviously this douche nozzle filmed us without my consent i reported it to the police and now almost a year after i filed the report i have to testify against the creep i have no legal rep except the state's victim advocate who only seems to have experience with dv cases has anyone else been through something like this i can't find a way to report him via tinder I deleted my account a long time ago. My biggest concern is that he's still out there being a creep to other ladies on Tinder. Downloaded Tinder for quick and simple hookups. First couple matches were pretty decent. Drinks, sex, etc. The third girl however wanted to take things a little slower. First date, a little making out. Second date, same thing but still won't go home with me. Third date, we had some really awkward sex with the lights on and no music. I was so nervous. I had a hard time keeping it up and she was barely wet. We've been dating for 10 months and she is going to meet my parents this weekend. The horror. <laughs> Happened a year ago. Met this guy. Similar interests. Looked great in his pictures. We decided to meet up on a Sunday for lunch. I was so hungover from a friend's Christmas party that I threw up upon arrival. He didn't seem to mind. He didn't order a drink and I couldn't order one due to the hangover. Once the hangover subsided, I suggested we walk around and head into a bar. He doesn't like the first bar, had a bad experience at the next bar, and keeps on passing on them. Until we finally get to his favorite bar, he orders drinks, and after a few more drinks I suggest heading to a wine bar. He passes because he confesses that he's only 20, and while his profile said he worked at a local college, it was a work-study position, because he is a junior there. Maybe it was the hangover, maybe it was the exhaustion, but I still brought him home. Things occurred, and I found out he was a virgin. He ran away in tears and threw up on my apartment stairs, repeated the process once he was 21, and it was almost the same situation. Never again. We talked for a couple of hours, drank some wine, watched a movie and we had sex. Then things went a little downhill. We laid in bed and suddenly it looked like she was about to black out so I helped her sit right up and asked if I could help her. Get her some water and stuff. But she didn't speak a word. She just sat there with her hands in her hair for a couple of minutes and then puked all over my sheets. At this point I wanted to get her to the shower ASAP but she was just stunned or something. I didn't know what to do. After a couple minutes I finally convinced her to get up and brought her to the shower so she could clean herself while I could clean the sheets and all that. Every 5 minutes I checked on her if she was okay but she would just sit on the floor with the shower running and wouldn't talk. It was all very awkward. After 20 minutes or so I brought her a towel and some clothes and we sat on the edge of my bed and she told me that she was born without a womb. She cried. I calmed her down and we finally went to sleep. Without a blanket or sheets, I didn't have spare ones in my student apartment. The next day I made breakfast and she went home. Weirdest date I ever had. I matched this pretty cute looking girl. 
She didn't look like she was in super great shape but she didn't look obese or anything. Well, we exchanged numbers and I called her. She agreed to come over to my house so I waited outside while she found her way over. She pulls up in a super badass car so I'm like heck yeah. When she gets out, it looked like her suspension let out a sigh of relief. She was at least 300 pounds. Nice girl though. She gave me a back massage then I told her I was tired afterwards and she left. I'm a little late to the party but my first Tinder date has been my most eventful date ever. So I matched this absolutely drop dead gorgeous girl, way out of my league, and we arranged to meet in the city for a few drinks on a Friday evening. We meet in this little bar and share a drink. The conversation is a lot of small talk to begin with but it's flowing well. Anyway we're there for about 30 minutes when she says she hasn't eaten anything yet and asks if I wanna grab a bite to eat. I do. So we finish our drinks and start moving outside to find some food. As we're walking along the sidewalk I see this guy in front of me staring me down. Like he is proper shooting daggers at me and making me super uncomfortable. I try to ignore him. Look at the ground. Look at the girl. Whatever. We move to pass him and he spins around on his heel and slams me into a wall. He has his forearm pressed up against my neck and is pushing so hard my feet are starting to lift off the ground. I try and pull his arm away from my throat, unsuccessfully, and my vision is starting to go black. I thought I was done for here. In a last ditch effort to not be strangled to death, I use the wall as a board to push my knee up into him as hard as I can. I hit him square in the groin and he relinquishes his grip. My vision starts to return, although it's giving me a splitting headache. I splutter and try and get my breath back a bit while I watch this guy curl over, red in the face with veins popping out of his forehead. He stumbles over to the street and throws up all through the gutter. I turn to the girl who's just watching all of this like a ruin headlights. Turns out, the guy was her ex-boyfriend who heard about our date through a mutual friend of theirs. I managed to wheeze out enough to ask her if she'd like to get another drink with me, as I could really use one. She declines and says she's just going to get a ride home, and practically sprints away from whatever the heck this situation was. I ended up leaving this other guy puking in the street and stayed out for a few hours by myself. Had a really good night in the end, met a bunch of new people and a pretty fun story, in hindsight. Went out with a girl, and had a great time together. I only knew her first name. We were texting later that night after our date and I told her to add me on snapchat and gave her my username. She added me and up popped a request from first name last name. Her last name being my mom's very rare maiden name. She was my second cousin. We clarified things briefly and never spoke again. People that walked in on their so having sex with another person how did you react? Serious. I vomited. It felt like it happened even before it registered what I had seen. It caught me totally by surprise. No suspicions. No sounds coming through the door. I was walking towards the door. Looked in the window as I passed. Suddenly vomited in the grass. As I'm heaving it slowly sinks in what I saw. I can't believe it. Totally caught me by surprise. I walk down the street to give myself some room to breathe. I sit down on the curb wanting to cry or something. I couldn't decide if I was devastated or furious. I sat there for hours. Thankfully it was only a girlfriend. Anyways, we lived together, and I got released early, military at the time, and came home, caught her in the act, and honestly I think it was the dude's reaction that kept me calmer than anything. He started yelling at her who the frick is this guy, and you said you were single, she had lied through her teeth to the guy, and to be honest, I've never been one to hang pictures or anything, or to live like a slob so it is fairly believable he didn't know a guy lived there. Anyways, I just started packing my stuff, and she tried to yell at me, and cut at me and stop me from packing. She tried to take stuff from me, and dumped my bags, and I just kept my head down and kept packing away. Honestly, I think I took it the best way I could. There was other stuff like quickly contacting the landlord, and informing him I was moving out, at will tenant in a month to month lease and getting out of there the next day, but my reaction was the only sensible thing I could do at the time I think. He started yelling at her who the frick is this guy, and you said you were single. Well at least he reacted sensibly too. All too often people get mad at the wrong person in these situations. I didn't say anything, 
just walked in and she said the typical, it's not what you think I just walked out and haven't spoken to her in over 6 months, I don't even miss her, it's nice to say that and actually mean it. Walked in on my ex, after 3 years together, with one of my best friends, at the time, took a double take and just stood there for what couldn't have been more than 5 seconds. I then just drove back to my dorm and literally lost my crap for a minute. I've never been one to actually be out of control of my temper, but at the time, all the emotions overwhelmed me as I fell out of shock. I will never forget that moment that I felt that I had no control over myself. It was both frightening and relieving. Literally losing your crap is pooping your pants. Girlfriend had been feeling sick the past few days. It was a slow day at my part-time job so my manager decided to let a co-worker and I off early. Decided to surprise her with soup and a red box movie I picked up when I was heading out. The shower was running when I got there so I warmed the soup up and sent her a text telling her I was downstairs with a surprise. While preparing it all, I heard a very distinguishable voice yell out in joy. That voice belonged to a pretty good friend of ours. Each step up the stairs boiled more anger but finally seeing it with my eyes only brought disappointment. 8 months destroyed in 8 seconds. The amount of times she apologized and told me it's never happened before this didn't matter. I won't lie, it fricked me up. I'm still dealing with trust issues and anxiety from it all. E. They've been dating ever since and I never did see the great Gatsby. Punched a wall that turned out to be a support column and broke my hand in two places. Not the brightest response. If I could do it all again, I would have just walked away and stayed away. Comma punched a wall that turned out to be a support column. Was really hoping that the building was going to crumble around you like a scene out of the Hulk or some crap. Sadness. Wasn't as angry as I thought I would be. I had suspicions beforehand. We had been together for a year. She started getting distant about a month ago. Walked in on them last night. It is what it is. But there's a massive hole in my heart now. I didn't catch her in the SCT. But I came home one day to find another man's boxer shorts on my bedroom floor. The tidal wave of sadness was overwhelming. She swore he had just changed into swim trunks and accidentally left his underwear. That story wasn't believable then and it was less believable when she moved in with him after our breakup. First met my wife when I was studying abroad in China. We dated briefly over there and kept in touch online when I returned home. Eventually, the two of us got married and she moved out here to the states with me. Occasionally her family comes to visit. Four years into the relationship, I catch her with her brother in bed. I didn't know what the frick to think. Is this a weird cultural thing? Is this guy even her brother? I got angry, yelled at her, stormed out for the night, and crashed at my friend's apartment. I went to work, came back home when she was at school, and the guy was gone. I go through her MacBook. Her Skype and email were saved. I find out the guy was her husband. The money we were sending to help her parents was being sent to this guy and her kids. We're since divorced. I haven't dated in years. I'm struggling with major self-esteem issues. No I'm better off without her, but I miss the feeling of being in love and having a sense of belonging. I know poverty makes you do strange things, but I cannot imagine pimping your wife and the mother of your kids out, and for years. We'd been dating for over a year. She'd gotten a new job and to congratulate her I left work early and brought over two bottles of champagne. No one was answering the door, but her roommate was in the stairwell outside their friend's apartment and heard me knocking. She let me in. We both walked together to their room at the end of the hall and as her roommate pushed the door opened, my so called out not to come in and I heard laughing. At this point, I moved on a kind of numb autopilot and pushed the door open. She was on top of him. She threw the blanket over her shoulders and looked back toward the door. I honestly lost my crap. I cried. Screamed. Went to absolute pieces. I knew the guy from other friends and he'd abandoned a close friend of mine after their daughter was born severely epileptic. She wasn't apologetic at all. They were in love. I drove home. Bawling the whole way. I haven't loved anyone like I loved her yet in my life. I drank both bottles of champagne at my apartment and packed a bag, calling my family to pick me up. I spent a few days with them. Being back home reminded me of the actual, unconditional love in my life. She and the guy deserved each other. In the end, 
She called me almost a year later while she was living with him and wanted to come over. She wanted to have sex. So we did. Then I detailed the whole affair in a message to him and he kicked her out of his house. Everything works out in the end. People. Well I walked in on them sleeping in our bed. I came home early from a road trip with a friend of mine and walked into my bedroom, happy to wake her up and surprise her. For whatever reason the guy had a polaroid at the bedside table. So I took a picture, set it next to them, basically to say be glad I didn't kill you, and walked out. She tried justifying it later but I think I barely said 10 words to her after that. Dude, the polaroid thing. That is brilliant. She must have been freaked out beyond belief when she woke up to that. I wanted to surprise him on his birthday, so I came with some of our friends to his dorm, bringing gifts and birthday cake. When I opened the door using the spare key he gave me, there he was, balls deep in a girl he brought home from club. We just kind of stared at them in shock and they stared back, also in shock, and then we all left without a word, dumping all the gifts and cake onto his floor. He hasn't won any of his friends back ever since. That's the only time I've heard of a situation where the friends witness it too. Weird sense of justice that they knew too. I was on a trip and decided to come home a couple days early and surprise my, now ex, fiancé. We were not living together so I was going to go to my apartment to shower because I took a red eye flight and I wanted to wash off the airplane stink before I surprised her with some flowers. I walk in and I see a pair of shoes by the door that were not mine. I thought maybe they were my roommates. As I round the corner to my room I start to hear moaning and heavy breathing. I thought my roommate was fricking in my room. So I thought I would frick with him. I burst through the door and said something like surprise sucker and find my fiance getting fricked by her roommate. I guess their other roommate had people over so they thought to go to my place. Which they thought was empty. I looked at them and I think you should leave the ring and the key. They freaked out and asked what I was doing home. I told them that this is my place and I didn't have to answer to them. They scrambled to collect their crap and leave. In the process she left behind her iPad. I decided to go through it. I'm really proud of that but I figured. Why not the wedding is off now anyway. Turns out she had been sleeping with a bunch of different people for the past 6 or 7 months. Sounds like you were really lucky to have discovered that she was a cheater before you got married. I'll never understand why people who cannot be monogamous get married. It was about 2 years ago. He and I had been dating for almost a year and halfway through that year, I introduced him to a girl whom I'd considered to be my best friend. I'd had a feeling he was into her but she had told me she wasn't attracted to him. As months went on, I noticed they grew closer, they'd hang out without me, I'd catch a glimpse of her phone when he would message her, and he stopped letting me stay the night. I kept telling myself I was being paranoid and that neither of them would ever hurt me. One morning after a party, I drove home and decided to swing by his house. Her car was in the street. At 8am, he lived with his mom so she let me in the house. I stood outside his room and when he came out, I looked past him to see the girl naked in his bed. We sat outside for about 30 minutes and I kept telling him I knew it. I knew it was happening. He basically told me I brought it on myself because butthole logic. I never spoke to her again. I only spoke to him a few times to get my stuff. The girl moved in with him soon after. They recently bought a house. But a few days before they moved in, she left him for a girl. They were going at it so hot and heavy that they didn't even notice that I was there. I put a note on the bedroom door, got in my car and moved to a different state. I admire your cold efficiency. Came home to see them on the couch and he was quickly doing up his pants. She'd been blowing him. I walked to the bathroom, more to give them a chance to leave than to pee. They did. Years later she came to terms with the fact that she can't be monogamous. At least it wasn't just me. She's cheated on literally everyone she's dated. I know a two girls like this. They need to either become swingers or hot wives or get into cuckolding. But, for some reason they refuse to do anything but monogamous relationships. Well I came home from work about 2 hours early due to finishing up my paperwork quite early. Then I entered the bedroom ready to take shower. Then it happened. And to be completely honest, I just stood there and stared at them as they stared back at me. She then said babe, it's not what it looks like. I then started laughing in an obnoxious way and turned around and left the room. 
Then when she came out of the room, I'm guessing he left the same way he came in the window. She found me playing Battlefield 4 on my PC. Baby she said. I just replied saying how she asked if I was okay. I just said yeah, I'm fine. I guess she thought everything was actually okay and started to walk back into the bedroom. As she walked away I continued to keep playing and just said oh. And you have 3 days to get all of your things out. She tried to get me to take it back and started to get frustrated saying I can't do that. I simply replied I signed the lease. I personally pay all the bills and everything that is even involved between you and I has my name on it. Not yours. So you need to get out. I would appreciate that greatly. She then started to cry and I just laughed. Some may call me heartless for this but if you knew the amount that I had put into the relationship and how much I sacrificed for it, you wouldn't blame me. Came home early from work, noticed a strange car outside, found them sleeping in our bed, cozy as can be after doing the deed. They woke up to me closing the door and leaving. She called and begged me to come home. I said everything I had ever bitten my tongue about. Filed for divorce two days later. A month after divorce was final. I moved 1000 miles away. She still wants me to come back and tells me it's the biggest mistake she ever made. People ask me why I even still talk to her. I say it's because I have to be civil. The truth is I'm still enjoying knowing she's struggling and that I won. Petty. I know. But frick her. R.I.P. Inbox. Thanks for the gold, kinda stranger. Walked in on my ex, not having sex with her ex BF, bit him asleep in his boxes on her bed, and her beside him. I had bought her a bunch of gifts because I had been away at school and was busy. Thought I'd surprise her, I guess I did. She bolted up as soon as I walked in. I put the gifts on the ground, and said, so, I bought you gifts, I guess I should just go, left the gifts and walked out. She chased after me and threw herself in front of my car and wouldn't move until I came in to talk to her. The guy left while I was sitting in my car contemplating running her over. We went in sit and talked. Decided not to end things. Two weeks later, on Valentine's Day, she dumped me because I hadn't yet put the past behind me. She was crazy. Contacted me and told me she loved me still. Two years later after being engaged and pregnant, I told her sorry but things were over and I was in a relationship with someone I love deeply. My then GF proceeded to cheat on me and dump me a week later. My luck was not the greatest. Good news is now I'm married to a wonderful woman. The guy left while I was sitting in my car contemplating running her over. Nice writing. That's probably my favorite line in all of this thread. Yeah, I've been there too. I'm glad you've made it at the end. I was already at a low point in my life. I actually just got fired and came back to the hotel room where we were staying at. I reiterate it was a very low point in my life and went straight to the bathroom to take a crap. Hadn't really thought about why my girlfriend wasn't there. Sitting on the toilet, I recognized her singing through the vents. I could tell she was in the shower next door. Banged on the next door down for like 5 minutes before I heard the neighbor yell at her that it was me. I said open the freaking door and he obliged. I walked straight past him and threw her clothes at her as she was getting out of the shower. As she argued with me, Dusha McGee decided that's when he'd step in and shove me and tell me to frick off. I promptly lost it. Broke his nose and continued to throw him around his hotel room. I left when he started screaming about the cops. I just took off my bloody shirt and started walking down the street and kept going for a few hours. All before noon. It was a crappy day. I honestly don't regret my actions. Don't get freaking physical with me after I discovered you fricked my girlfriend. TLDR. Just got fired. She was next door. Scuffled with the guy for a bit. Went for a walk. Glad you smashed that dude. What kind of clown would get aggressive after you fricked his girl? That guy deserves much worse. This was my first boyfriend in college. He was a lot of firsts. Actually including the first person to cheat on me. It was my boyfriend's birthday and I was going to surprise him by decorating his room at midnight. He usually has work until 2am those days so my plan was to go to his dorm room and decorate it. I knew his roommate was going home that weekend so his roommate was nice enough to lend me his key. I have all the supplies with me and go to his room at 1am. I like to vlog things and was going to record the process so I had my phone recording me entering his room. I swing open the door and I see him and another girl. 
I guess I have impeccable good timing because he comes all over her back as I open the door. And remember, my phone was recording all of this. I just kind of stand there. We all just look at each other and he starts to say, Babe, tears start falling down my face and I just lose it. I fall to the floor and start crying. He scrambles for his clothes and I just leave. I leave all the supplies there, grab my bag and phone, and just walk away. I went back to my room without saying anything. In fact, I never said anything to him ever again. He stalked me for a bit after. Fun fact, his roommate didn't know we broke up. Messages me a few days after telling me he thinks my ex is cheating on me with a girl. He says the name of the girl, which is not the same girl I saw him in bed with. TL. DR. My first BF cheated on me on his birthday. I cried and left in silence. Roommate messages me, without knowing we broke up, that my BF is cheating on me with a girl who was not the girl my BF was in bed with. BF was cheating on me with two girls. Well. Your ex's roommate was a good guy for telling you when he had suspicions. Came home from work early to spend a long weekend with my fiance. Put the keys on the table. Instant smell of sex and sound of faint moaning. For a second I was naively aroused thinking she was rubbing one in. Walked to the bedroom and felt the blood drain from my face. Just felt like a ghost standing there. They hadn't heard me come in and I didn't know what to shout or do to interrupt them. Just walked back out to the car, and then the anger seriously kicked in. Went to the garage and got the chainsaw. Never starts first try, was my granddad's. I just wanted the noise to scare the living frick back out of them. Back to the bedroom doorway and started pulling the cord as calmly as I could hold my crap together. Instant screams from both of them. Pulled the cord a few times for dramatic effect and told them they had 5 seconds to get out of my house. The guy scrambled and got his crap together. She just fell to the floor and started crying. I couldn't take the pleading and crying. So I just got in the car and left, with the chainsaw for some reason. Love of my life turned into a succubus hell bitch in under a second. There was this girl staying at my house for a bit. She had family issues and never wanted to go home. We'll call her Erica. Every night, Erica would start crying when we were heading to bed. And my BF and I would stay up hours trying to calm her down. After a couple weeks, I kicked her out. My BF really didn't like it, but I was firm. We needed sleep, and this girl needed to deal with her family issues. Two days later I was at work and my BF called to say he was staying home sick and wouldn't need a ride later. I felt bad for him, so on my hour lunch break I went to the soup shop to grab him some tasty soup. It took a while and I was going to use my whole lunch break bringing him soup. I got home, and he wasn't on his computer, very unusual, and the bedroom door was closed. I opened the bedroom door, and him and the girl were naked in bed together, not actively sexing, just naked. I poured the soup on them and left. He called me and said it wasn't what it looked like. She was keeping him warm since he had a fever. What an amazing excuse. She totally had to be naked to keep him warm I'm sure. I told him he better have his stuff out by the time I got home or I was calling the cops. He broke into my apartment 3 days later to leave flowers and a note. I was 20 years old and dumb so I took him back. My GF and I had a large group of friends. Many of those friends were bi or gay. One night she went to a party where most of our friends were at. I didn't want to go but then later changed my mind. Got to the party when everyone was loaded, walked into bedroom and she's banging one of our gay friends. The frick. She cheated on me with a gay dude. I was obviously upset and didn't talk to her for weeks. We got back together for a few months and I finally just couldn't do it anymore. We were both young and stupid anyways. I laugh about it now. Honeymoon hotspot workers. What are your best and worst stories regarding newlyweds? I don't work at a honeymoon host but, but over winter break I went on a cruise. My cousins and I had met this couple on the cruise that were on their honeymoon. The husband was pretty chill, and the wife seemed really nice too. I think they were in their 20s, he was like 27, and she 24. I was drunk the whole cruise, so I may be wrong. Well anyway we had hung out with them just about every night partying and drinking at the bar. Well on the last night my oldest cousin went to bed early, and it was just I and my other cousin. 
It was around 2 in the morning and we were just chillin' Ben all drunk enjoying food, when all of a sudden she comes stumbling into the restaurant and sat with us. She told us her husband went to bed, and she was lonely. We openly invited her to join us, and that's when she completely opened up. She was saying how frisky she was, and how she had been keeping her eye on us. We thought she was joking, but then she turned, and said that if she wasn't recently married she would have loved to frick my cousin and I. We didn't know what to do, so we just walked her to her room, and said goodnight to her. But I really have felt bad for her husband. She tried to apologize to us the next day, but my cousin got mad, and told her she better get her act together. My cousin is 23, and I'm 20 BTW. I used to work events at a high-end place that did conferences and wedding receptions. To give you an idea, one two-year waiting list for wedding receptions and cheapest plan menu was 300 ahead. Plus being a hotel the bride and groom stay in a room on the night. Proposition so many times. Once every staff member got handed a photo and it was do not allow to enter and to call security. It was the groom's mother apparently she hated the bride so much they put an avo out on her. It took three police officers to get her into the police car. She bit one of the security staff. A bride so drunk they refused to allow her to sign the marriage certificate. The ceremony and reception went ahead but the marriage officially happened next day when sober. The best and most memorable, the bride's father was paying for the reception. Groom asked for a few projectors to be set up so that he could play a movie and photo montage of their relationship. All's going well for 5 minutes until it hits a scene of the bride being pounded by two guys, neither of which was the groom. One was the best man. Still to this day don't know who the other guy was. During the video the groom had left via a cab. One other time the newlyweds had a cab called to the airport. We rang the room 30 minutes before the cab call as a courtesy. No answer. Manager goes and knocks and no reply. Say you he used the house key and there's the couple sleeping. Her in the wedding dress and him half in the suit bother covered in vomit. So men have tried we are honeymoon couple please give us freebies. A Christian couple I know had never had fricked before their wedding night. The guy wanted to break the ice so he got naked while his bride was in the sweet bathroom on their honeymoon. He spread eagle and aimed his butt towards the bathroom door. His bride comes out and he rips a fart, but crap came out. He crapped the bed and she locked herself in the bathroom for 7 hours crying. They're fine now but she wanted a divorce that night. I want to believe this. I worked as a bartender at a pretty nice hotel. There was a big convention center attached to it with a lot of meeting rooms and a huge ballroom. I wasn't always aware what was going on at the convention center unless the hotel was full for a convention. It had been a fairly quiet night and I didn't have anyone else sitting at the bar when a guy takes a seat and orders a beer. I got it for him and he looked like he was kind of upset. Like something was really weighing on him. But I didn't want to pry. Some people don't always want to talk. This guy did. He said, aren't bartenders supposed to listen to your problems? I say, sure man. What do you want to talk about? He begins to tell me that he had gotten married that day they had had their reception next door and were staying the night in the hotel. I congratulate him, but I'm a bit confused as to why he's sitting here by himself on his wedding night. He tells me that he's in his 30s and his bride is 26. They had been together at least a year and a half. And she's a virgin. And he's not. I'm still confused as to why he's not consummating his new marriage. And he then tells me she was so nervous about their big night that she drank too much champagne and was in the room. Passed out after having gotten sick. I had to take a second to keep my composure and not chuckle at this poor guy's misfortune because he was obviously really upset about it. He explained that they're taking a flight out tomorrow and then getting on a cruise for their honeymoon. I did my best to try and reassure and be optimistic for him. I said something about nerves and I was sure that everything would work out for him on the cruise. He seemed a little better than he was when he first sat down, but he still looked frustrated, and who could blame him? He ordered another beer and went back to his room. I worked for a timeshare company as a supervisor over the phone, so I got all the escalated calls for those upset owners for whatever reason. And there was this couple that were spending their honeymoon in Aruba. They had it all planned out, they were going to take a nice walk along the beach under the moonlight and go back and just get freaky. Well, the time of year that they got married in, happened to be a very humid time, so there's a lot of bugs out. I get the call from the bride, she's irate. 
go straight to the supervisor. She called in and blamed the timeshare company for the fact that she wasn't able to get naked in front of her new husband and flick him so that they could convenience their first child together. All because she happened to get some mosquito bites and she was embarrassed to get naked in front of him because of those bites. And since the beach was on the resort's property, it was the hotel's fault that she couldn't get naked and get pregnant. To not convenience the child. For shame. But ended at this upscale lodge in Texas. Catered mostly to oil money and the FW area rich people. This lady came in, probably 35-ish and decent looking with a nice body. Not quite a newlywed, but was married 6 months earlier. Then he cheated and she left him, about 4 martinis and she started spilling her guts. She said they had only had frick maybe 10 times as a married couple and she misses the feel of a man etc. Really putting it on thick that she needed some. So I playfully bartender flirted with her, gave her a free drink, paid good attention etc. It got to be about midnight, bar closed at 12, and she asked if I could have a drink in her room with her when I got out. I said I couldn't do that, place had very strict rules and I was making decent money. After a few minutes I decided that the story might be worth it and I told her that if she ordered room service I could deliver it in a few minutes. There was an end of night walk that had to be done that takes about 20-30 minutes, which I figured I could just not do and I could help out this divorcee. She drunkenly nodded, and walked away. After about 15 minutes we got the order for strawberries to her room. I prepped them and got ready to go. Told manager I was going to do the night walk as well. Probably 15 minutes had gone by and I got to her door. It was slightly open I knocked and walked in. There she was on the bed with another guy. Really fat hotel guest she must have picked up. Going down on her and she was no joke slapping his head yelling at him tongue frick me harder while he was jerking himself off. Neither one noticed me at all. Set down the strawberries and walked out. It wasn't even remotely close to a honeymoon hotspot, and that was the sad part. I was 17 and working at a particularly crappy open air motel on the night shift next to the nicest hotel in town, which wasn't saying much. A young couple came in practically in tears because the honeymoon suite they'd booked at the nicer hotel had rented out their room, and there wasn't anywhere else to stay, so they came to our motel. Literally the only one in town that had a single room to rent. I felt terribly sorry for them and gave them the biggest discount I could, and let them into that last crappy little room. While they were getting their luggage, I remembered the suite right above the office that was usually rented out as an apartment. It wasn't any great shakes of an apartment, but it was the best we had. I didn't say anything to the couple right away, but went upstairs and did the best I could to scrub off the dust and spiders and rub a bleach rag over the linoleum. It took me about an hour and I was pretty proud of myself for getting the room ready as quick as I had, given the decrepit condition it was generally left in. I threw the bleach rags and dirty linens in the laundry room, and went to go bring the couple to their fancy-ish new suite. I knocked, but no one came to the door. The new husband eventually asked what I needed and I told them about their room. I was sadly puzzled that they didn't want to seem to leave even just to check it out, and that they didn't even come to the door or turn on the lights, and that the new bride kept giggling. I made my way sadly back to the front office and concluded that they must have been really tired after such a long day. They sounded a lot happier than they did when they first came in though, so I figured my efforts weren't a total waste. They were definitely naked. I'm not a honeymoon hotspot worker but I do have a good story at a resort with honeymooners. When I was 19 I went to Hilton Head, South Carolina with my girlfriend, at the time, and her mother and brother. We were staying in a timeshare that her mom and uncles shared and it was a pretty nice place. One night my ex and I decided to go out to the hot tub for some alone time. However, there was already a couple there. We still wanted to go into the hot tub, so we went anyway. She was a real personable person, so she started a conversation with the couple right away and that's when we found out they were on their honeymoon. We all kept talking and after a bit they offered us some of the champagne they had, which we eagerly accepted. After the bottle was finished, we were all trying to decide what to do. My ex and I had some weed we planned on smoking and decided to ask the couple if they wanted any, since they were kind enough to share their champagne. They accepted right away and invited us over to where they were staying. If you want a fake foursome story, like most have been anticipating, stop here and skip to the, the next edit. 
If you want the real story, continue reading. We smoked and drank wine with them until we were all pretty gone. That's when the couple started getting really emotional and serious. They told us that we were a cute couple and that we were young, so we shouldn't get ourselves tied down so early, by what they were saying. It almost seemed like they were having some reservations about the marriage, which made it really awkward for us. My ex and I exchanged looks trying to look for a way out. Since the night was taking a turn we did not want, when she got a call from her brother asking where we were, we used that call as our way out, so we said goodbye and congratulated them again before we left. That night and that couple has stuck with me over the years and I honestly hope everything ended up well with them because they were really cool and nice. We got back and as we packed a bowl, they offered us some wine. We drank and smoked until eventually the idea of a foursome was brought up. We were all pretty gone at this point and this was their first night together as a married couple, so it seemed like a great idea. We decided to make a game of it though and played a strip version of Never Have I Ever, using all of our fingers instead of just three so we would ensure we'd be naked. After about 20 minutes we were all pretty much naked and things got heated. My ex started making out with her, but before anything happened we decided that we should smoke another bowl. That's when I decided to be a jerk and derail this whole story by saying thank you for choosing this adventure. Maybe they had both escaped bad relationships and were grateful they had found each other a little later in life. This just happened a few days ago. I work at an upscale hotel chain on the coast in Florida. We get a lot of international guests. This couple wasn't on their honeymoon but they were clearly married and on a special trip. They were both French and in their late 60s. I was working at the pool and the husband walks up to me looking for a towel. As he is walking up I see his wife pull out a bottle of wine and take a serious pull right out of the bottle. We have a no glass policy on the pool deck and not wanting to make a scene I grab a couple plastic cups and ask the husband if he could put their wine in the cups. He looks really outraged offended when I asked and said my wife doesn't drink alcohol. Well I was pretty confused at this point but I just said whatever it is, could they put it in the cups? He takes the cups and walks back over to their chairs and after some heated conversation she storms out, giving me a witheringly dirty look as she leaves. I walk over to the guy apologizing. I didn't mean to upset you guys. Just doing my job, etc. Turns out she was an alcoholic and had been pretending to be sober. The guy ended up crying as he sorta of explained what the big deal was. It was pretty awkward. I think it was probably for the best that it came out into the open though. TL. DR. Couple comes to my hotel from Europe. I accidentally revealed to the husband that the wife isn't sober. I wouldn't take the dirty look personally. When someone is that deep into their addiction, they can find fault with anyone else rather than look into their own behavior. I worked at a goddamn Dairy Queen. Hot spot? I think not. Anyway, this couple comes up to the counter, gushing and talking about how they just got married X days ago. They were clearly looking for someone to comp their first shared blizzard. What they did not realize was that I knew the girl involved, from a church related thing, no less. The relationship was just distant enough so that she didn't recognize me without context. Clearly, they were dating or friends or something who decided to try to get free ice cream. If she'd truly been engaged, I wouldn't have known. Anyway, I said in my sweetest voice, sure, name of girl, and congrats. Her face was priceless both at the time, and later when I saw her among church people. Totally worth the money I had to eat for the blizzard. I worked at a camera photo store near a tourist location when I was a student. Back when you took your film to get developed in an hour, my job was operating the big photo developing machine. A generally crappy, boring job. Most of the time it was fully automated. Get the film picker, load the film, press some buttons, wait. Then the stack of photos comes out and I put it in an envelope for pickup. I had a supervisor lab technician who monitored and calibrated the machine. So I was basically just a button pressing minion. 90% of the time I don't even glance at the stack that comes out. Unless I need to check for issues with the print so I'd have to get the lab tech. I always see the top print. However, when I load it into the envelope, and often read be nudes, I'd occasionally have to flip through the photos anyway to prevent the photos sticking together so you'd see things here and there. Generally these are not attractive people, so I don't ever flip through them I try not to take more than a glance if I could avoid it. Think unattractive. 
flabby 40 somethings performing oral in terrible hotel lighting, and you know what I'm talking about. One time, I saw a bald guy giving another man fellatio as the top photo. I didn't think much of it except the guy performing had a very noticeable facial mark. I think it was a birthmark or something. Again, I don't think much of it, just drop it into the envelope, put on the code sticker, toss it into the box. I had forgotten about it by the time I left for lunch, a local sandwich joint, but then halfway through my lunch I see this guy walks in, with the exact same birthmark on his face, and he was a priest. I tried not to stare, and he just buys a couple of cans of soda and walks out. The rest of my lunch all I could think of was that priest and the man sausage in his mouth. I have nothing against gays. It was just such a weird, intimate thing. When I went back, I asked the girl working at the cash register to see if a priest had picked up the photos. And she said he did. Of course I didn't tell anyone about it. Mostly because it's none of my goddamn business what a guy does on his vacation. I just hope he's happy. One time we had a couple who had just gotten married spend their wedding night with us before they were to fly out the next day for their honeymoon. We made sure the room was perfect, even comping them some champagne. Then, at about 1am, we got several complaints from the surrounding rooms that they were screaming at each other. Not ecstatic. Yay. Baby kind of screams. More like yay. Go ahead and cry, you frickin' bee kind of screams. So, our protocol in such a situation is to call the cops for a domestic dispute. Turns out the guy had punched through our wall. He was arrested, and she spent her wedding night alone. Great foundation for a marriage. Not really a honeymoon story but I thought I'd share. I used to work at a big hotel and one week we had a gay wedding. The ceremony reception went well with about 60 people in attendance. For the night the couple had booked one of the bigger rooms, expecting about 200 people. So we set up all the tables buffet and the DJ sets up all prepared for what we expected to be a massive night. Cut to 11pm. I walk into this big room to find about 25 people and one of the grooms crying onto the other. Unfortunately they had booked their wedding the same weekend as our city's gay pride festival. No one has shown up to the night party and half the people from the day had left to attend the festival. We felt so bad for them. He was just crying all night. Poor guys. We rent out holiday homes on a weekly basis. That Saturday, the family that rented one of them didn't show up. Though they paid the 3000 euros up front. No phone call or message to warn us of any delay. We tried calling them. No reply. In the end we concluded they must have had an accident on the way. Two days and various attempts at contact from us later. I get a very embarrassed phone call. It turns out they were at their own wedding feast when they were supposed to arrive. In their home country 1000 kilometers from there. They passed out at 5 a.m. Slept through the next day and only found our messages the following evening. The whole party just assumed someone else had told us they planned to arrive two days too late. I'm glad they turned out to be just wed rather than dead. But who the frick goes on honeymoon together with their parents and in-laws? My brother used to work at a big restaurant resort that would often do weddings. One night they were hosting a large dinner party for all the guests after the wedding earlier that day. Of course at that point everyone was pretty wasted so the groom ended up getting into a fight with one of the bride's distant uncles. I kid you not. The uncle ended up biting off the groom's finger and swallowing it so he couldn't reattach it. Everyone was freaking out and the groom's men ended up beating up the uncle until he puked back out the severed finger. My first marriage was back in 1987. We were both 20. Barely enough money for food and rent. You know the drill. We went on a honeymoon to a resort location nearby in a hotel. They gave us a room right next to the door leading to the indoor pool area. We checked into our room and I did the whole carry over the threshold thing and we got busy pretty fast. Clothes piled on floor and us naked going at it athletic sweaty freaking. Then I heard a noise and looked toward the door and I see a couple of families staring into our open door that I forgot to even close. Freaking paparazzi. Literally. I work at a hotel. Since I have been working in this business, I have decided that I am never going to step foot in a hotel jacuzzi tub. I used to work at a large hotel where weddings receptions would be held on a regular basis. But one night, after a wedding, the newlywed couple is in their suite and complaints start coming in about a fight in their room. 
Turns out, they got into it with each other and the new wife beat up her new husband. The cops ended up taking her to jail. I guess the new husband was fapping that night. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.